just a real quick sound check. I'm gonna plug this. You didn't fuck with any of the outputs, did you? Okay. Real quick. Okay, and you're gonna. I'm. I'm gonna need to turn the stream sound off. Okay. Um, as soon as that commercial's over, go ahead and tell me, and I will reset the sound. God, those commercials last for fucking ever. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> That's terrible. And oh man, I've seen that commercial so many times. Okay, uh, how's the sound? I sound a little low, I think. Yeah. Let's see. Let's test, test, test. Nah, uh, not too bad. Not too bad? And I probably sound really loud? Sorry? Do I sound really loud? No, you don't sound loud at all. Okay. Um, good. Well, let me go unplug that and get that back. Um, you want to... No, let me go unplug that. Okay, turn all exterior sound, because it's going to play sound through um, that back speaker. You want to... Let me go unplug that. Okay, uh, how do I do all, that? Just exit Sorry, out, sound. or turn Every off the sound, sound, sound on Twitch, or oh, you're echoing. Okay. Just gonna mute it. Yeah, so just mute it, it, and make sure that likes, uh, Skype's on Do Not Disturb, and all that. And, um, <clears throat> we are live, and everything is recording. Does everything look good on your side? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so everybody, so everybody that's here knows, right over there is Cyphus. I'm looking at him. Except we're blocked by a big screen that I can't see anything on. Nope, so I'm literally looking through Cyphus on Skype, even though I'm like three feet away from him. Yeah, that's what I'm doing with you, but everything's <laughs> delayed by about two minutes, so it's really confusing. But just don't look at the stream, just, just, just do it normal, man. Um... We're going to be getting more and more advanced with the streaming. Uh, I am learning how to do this. I bought XSplit Premium. So it's pretty legit. Um, we can do 1920 by 1080. Uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, God, the only next, the next big innovation we need to make is people being able to hear our startup music. Yeah, I was I was wondering about that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, that could totally be done, um, but not today. All right, I'm gonna send out one last tweet that we're starting. So you have Twitch on your monitor? Yeah, I do. Okay, I'm gonna just put it on mine as well. I'm gonna get the news article ready to go. Um. I got a little pee pee. Do you, Loco? Okay. Good for you. <laughs> what a way. Alright, what the first thing to say. Ah, yes. Welcome, Welcome. to the stream. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Welcome to Defense of the Patients. You're not alone in having a little pee pee. Here at dot PTV, we all have little, little pee pees. I don't know, little pee pee. No little pee pee here. Um, so, we. Are good to go. Okay, what's uh, I'm down to do it whenever you are. Down to do it. All right, so everybody's gonna hear a brief bit of silence while the intro music plays, and Roland and I will bring in the show. Here we go. We hear music and you don't. Hey, everybody! Welcome to another episode of Defense of the Patients. We are a video game podcast, nerd podcast, all things geeky. I'm your host, Cyphus. I'm sitting here with my very festive co-host, Roland. Hello, everybody. And, uh, yeah, I like your Santa hat. It looks good on you. Thanks, dude. It's gonna, it's gonna be on me, uh, all of December, I figure, so. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I, I caught bits and pieces of your stream yesterday while I was playing my miserable seven games of Dota. With my Christmas music? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I popped in. It was funny because I... I was thinking to myself, ah, I, it's weird to be playing Dota 2 by myself and, you know, not be over at the studio playing with Roland. Mm -hmm. And I popped in, and uh, your now wife, Audrey, was saying... Holy uh, shit, <laughs> what? 
Yeah, she was <laughs> saying, but I'm Trans Siberian Orchestra. And, it, and, and I did, yeah. and I could only it could it only lasted like maybe two songs before I was like, fuck this shit. Like <laughs> this is weird. And I I don't know. It was like it felt like Tool Christmas music. Like it felt like Tool was trying to play Christmas music. Is what I, it felt like. I don't know. I like Trans Siberian. I know I'll get burned at the stake for saying that, but I turned it on for a little while and was like, ah, this is ah. It's just throwing my game off. And then I did a modern mix with classic Christmas music. So it was like, oh, I love this song. It's chestnuts roasting over, you know, an open fire. And then it would be like Mariah Carey coming on and just like, or something. All uh, she wants for Christmas is you, baby. Yeah, and like, I want for Christmas is a hot bath and wax dripped on my ass. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know. It's just yeah. shit like probably that bad. Yeah. <laughs> that bad. <laughs> I don't want to listen to Christmas music in your family gathering. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, so tuning into the stream, I, I popped in briefly between two of my games, and uh, I watched you, you know, doing your Dota picker thing, mm -hmm. um, and hearing. Uh, that's also how I knew that Audrey uh, couldn't get into that uh, anatomy lab. Got to hear you. Guys oh, have that oh, and that's how you brought that up today. I yeah. see the, I see the correlation. So all, I, I got all that information. From the stream. Yeah, so. she, she likes to be out here, uh, and she likes to call everybody imaginary. Like, I'm playing with my imaginary friends. And it's like, no, these are real people. Like, remember when Eric came and stayed with us for a week? <laughs> he was very real. <laughs> yeah, it's a real dude. Remember um, when we went to get lunch with Joshmo? Like, real guy. Those people exist. <laughs> yeah, it's real uh, people. Speaking of Easy Marquise, our fearless leader, he is not here today because he just had his back surgery. Wednesday. Uh, yeah, and he's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's, he's feeling a little uh, laid up. So we, we gave him the night off. We allowed it. We said, uh, miss one more show and you're fired. Uh, so he knows by next Monday that uh, he better get back on here. Gotta so. get your shit together. Like, gotta get your shit together. Yeah, I don't care if you got fucking back surgery, dude. It's back surgery, okay? I've known plenty of people who have just gotten over that and just been walking around right away, okay? Yeah, I mean, it's not like he had a herniated disc Please. or anything. I, I mean, I really do think he's a faker. Dare I say pussy? You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. No, I mean, if God. there were any up word. <laughs> if there were, yeah. So. Uh, so you want to implement something that we haven't done on the main show in a minute, uh, mm -hmm. which they've been starting up a little bit on the other Dota 2 shows in the .p network, mm -hmm. uh, which is State of Affairs. Yes. Do you want to you kick, kick over to that and get going? Sure, we can um, jump over to State of Affairs. Of course, the State of Affairs is definitely um, Dota 2 related. Um, as you can see, here, Cyphus, why don't you get us uh, started off with, or actually I'll start so you can catch up. Um, State of Affairs is something that was kind of the, the staple of what started Defense of the Patients. It was our first like uh, main thing that we did um, to kind of show our evolution in gameplay and if we're getting better, are we getting worse, are we, are we stagnating? We were stagnating for a very long time. I still feel like I'm stagnating. Um, anyway, oh, I know I'm stagnating, <laughs> <laughs> I, but I play a shitload, which is the sad part. Like I play a ton. My problem is, um, I don't play enough of the same heroes. So, uh, lately I've been focusing. Wait, do, do you really think that's your, your primary issue of late is that you don't play, you're not for lack of a better term, like spamming a batch of heroes? I, absolutely. I don't, I don't play a position. Like if somebody was like, you know, what? so what? we're starting a team, what position would Roland be? It's like, I don't know, like, what position are you? And I'll work around that. Because it's like, I've dabbled with mid. I've definitely dabbled with jungle. I've, I think the thing that I've dabbled least with is safe lane support, um, which I've been doing more of lately. And it's, it's just as gratifying, and it does slow the game down a lot. When you're a carry, it feels like the game is going really fast and, like, it's last hit to last hit, right? Like you're just you're just you're just living for the for the next last hit. That's all you're doing, and, and that's all you're thinking about. And the game is like moving really quickly, in my opinion. Like yeah. as a support, you're doing a lot more assessment of yes. what's going on overall in the big picture, where you need to be, and mm -hmm. what time it is. <laughs> yeah, what time it is. As a support, also, it's like your spells, like how many rounds of spells can I get off? Um, it's so like uh, for Lich, for instance. It's like okay, I can I can go in there. I can sacrifice a creep, which will be which will give some experience. I can hit my Q. Um, I can then throw frost armor. I can wait five more seconds, then I can do another Q. Um, and Q, it's it's not chain frost. I always call it chain frost. I think it's like frost blast or something like yeah. that. Uh, and I really enjoy that. Um, 
and as you can see, my three heroes that I picked this week are Phoenix, Bounty Hunter, and um, Lich. Because Which is they're funny because you've been giving you in recent history have given Lich a lot of shit. I have until I started playing him again and I saw the impact he can have on supporting a mid. Um, one of my better games I've had recently, and as pretty much everybody knows, I've been playing exclusively, basically, pretty much exclusively solo ranked. Um, it's just I prefer it. I I can mute and move on. There's no like emotional attachment, if you will. It's just I'm playing a game of Dota, and it relies on me doing well. If I don't do well, chances are we lose that game. And I love that feeling. I love the feeling of, okay, I fucked up big, and I'm going to pay for it big. Yeah, As... I, it's funny because I, I have like the exact opposite feeling with uh, Solo. I, I feel like even when I do well, uh, it's really up in the air. It's a really big coin toss, whether or not. Uh, we whether or not we win the game and I'll have an impact even as a carry or as a carry or support across the board if it, it just doesn't matter what kind of a game I'm having. Um, I think what you might be uh, suffering from uh, is a re no. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say ED. No, your problem is, and uh, I think I can pinpoint it is that like um, you wreck as a viper. Okay, mid game you're fucking killing it as a viper, and you're. I'm 12 and 1, and somebody takes your streak, and guess what? Well, all that gold that you accumulated has basically just been passed over to them. So it's kind of scary to do really good in the mid game. Um, in solo queue, it really honestly kind of is. It's, I would suggest doing good in the mid game. I would suggest being 12 and 1 on Viper. But, you know, if, if their Doom or if their Anti Mage or their hard carry kills you. He just got six, seven hundred gold, and whoever was around him got a good portion of gold. And now he has basically caught up to you in one death. Um, basically caught up to you, or, um, depending on what he's been doing or how, how bad he's been doing. And then you view the game as, I've been winning this whole time, and now I just lost. What the fuck? And I feel like that is just kind of like a fallacy that you see in Dota 2, is that if you do good at a, in a portion of the game, well, then I should win. And no, that's not the case. You need to do good throughout the entire entirety of the game. You even still, well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, even still, I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I feel like there's uh, maybe some, uh, I don't want to say hypocrisy in, in what you're saying, but uh, you're you're definitely at odds with yourself because when I mean, you're talking about how whenever you play a solo game, if you're doing well, you feel like your team wins. Yeah, um, and you do. Like if you get if I start off with a killing spree within the first like five minutes. I, I, I have taken three kills already, and I, and I haven't died. I feel like I'm going to win that fucking game. Or Broodmother, for example. Look at all the Broodmother games that I played where it's like, goddamn, Tier 2 is down at nine minutes, and the game goes 20 minutes longer, and it's over. Like, that's why Broodmother isn't so attractive to me anymore. So you think it's the types of heroes I'm playing? I think that, yeah, I think what your, your issue, and I think Doom is going to help you rise a lot in MMR, and I think we've seen a huge rise looking at your solo being 1698. It was a lot lower than that, and I think it, you'll definitely be able to climb and probably surpass me. I don't know. I, I feel, Actually, I think my solo, so when I really, when I made that decision, like, I don't know, a month and a half ago, two months ago, that I was going to really try to focus more on solo because I just had completely abandoned it almost from, I mean, almost from the moment go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which listeners of the show will know, uh, you know, primarily I play with Roland in a party or uh, for a long time played with Wazoo and Roland in a party or people within the Dockey Guild. Uh, so I never really played solo queue. Mm -hmm. um, and so it never went up from where I calibrated after we made our run back in like 2014. Where, yeah, anyway. Well, it was like, yeah, it was the end of 2014 when we did the Bristleback Coddle and then the Timbersaw Coddle. And that was, and what, what did we see? We were spamming heroes, and we saw a huge climb in MMR. Yeah, well, so that being said, I feel like I have started, and I, I mean, I guess I have, I don't play with the frequency that you do, but mm -hmm. I feel like I've started spamming Doom to an extent. I definitely pop in a few different ones. Um, yeah. Huskar is an easy one for me to go to, just because I, I, I feel like I keep hearing, hey, Huskar is really overpowered in the current meta. Or, hey, get Huskar. I hate that. Snag a Huskar whenever you... Uh... I want to stop right there. Um, I am so sick of this meta, that meta, this hero, that hero. Okay, that that affects you and I on such a small basis. It really no, does. I, I, I completely agree. Like, it's just, all it is is putting thoughts in your mind of, I'm going to succeed or I'm going to fail. And that's all it's really doing. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a Templar Assassin against 
Jakiro or Venomancer. Like, if you're a better Templar Assassin than I am Jakiro or than I am Venomancer, your, your Templar Assassin is going to win. I counter you, in theory, uh, really, really, really hard. All of my spells will pretty much ruin you. But if you're really, really good, you're going to win. And especially if you play Templar Assassin every fucking game. Hey guys, I'm mid, I'm Templar Assassin. Uh, chances are you're still going to do well as Templar Assassin no matter how hard I try and um, uh, counter you. Which is why you see a lot of Pudges and Invokers, I think, in higher skill brackets. It's because they just relentlessly pick Pudge and Invoker. Uh, and it doesn't matter if... Pudge is getting countered by Timbersaw every fucking game. He's getting better at Pudge. Right. And okay. I I get that. I get that the pro meta is not necessarily the pub meta. No. But I will say that I feel like with the recent batch of changes, that even the pub meta favors like a five v five fighting scenario. Right. I, I think, Hasn't it always like? No. No. Not always. I mean, I, I arguably. Would it have been like six eight two or six eight three? Whenever you and I first started, it was really big on uh, like it was really big on late game carries and push lineups. Sure, because the games were lasting longer because the broken uh, elastics of the game, which was the goal. No, no, no. I'm talking about before that. I'm talking six about point, we basically six point eight one. Then would be when okay. you were talking. That was when we first started. And we knew nothing. Well, I think six eight three was really the big. Like, no, six eight three was when they fixed it. Six eight two. No, six eight three is where sniper anyway. ruled. Sniper ruled the world in six eight three. Remember, and then the switch over six eight four is when Glimmer Cape and everything got added. And was that when the broken no the the were? broken yeah. gold mechanics were six point eight two a probably, and then six point eight two. Anyway, somebody B. out there on the stream, if you're listening and know this, correct us. But so regardless, that what I'm talking about is like that post like ti four like everybody banned like and nonsense. Because like because the push meta was really big at the time. Well, everybody um, banned Lycan even at our stupid Shadow skill Shadow. level. You know, it, and it was just like, okay, you're banning Lycan. I remember we talked about this on a number of shows where it's like, you know what I love to see when we play, uh, you know, Captain's Mode? Is when they ban Lycan first. Because that's fucking hilarious. Because guess how much that matters to us? Not at all. Yeah. Like, it's just, you saw Puppy ban Lycan because guess what? Archeezy's really good at Puppy. Or for whatever reason, he banned Lycan and it was a good ban. Uh, so but I, it doesn't. I, it it's not like trickle down. It I mean yes it is to but it the, the further it trickles down the less it matters. So my big argument though is that I think I, I still think that in in pubs that like a five v five the 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 meta unbeknownst un, the, almost in an unconscious way the meta is uh, it rewards teams who group up and have good five v five. Um, and I, I, Why, what does that have to do with the meta? I'm just, I'm confused about that. Like, what does that have to do with the, the meta game? No, my point being that in pubs, because I think the meta favors that, or But what do you mean, like, that. explain to me, me, like, what you mean by the fucking meta. Like, what, what? Because we see more Doom now? Because we see more, you know, like, what? Why, why does it favor? That's like what because I'm so I, confused well, because by. Because I think I, I think the hero I think the because <clears throat> we know. see Slardar it that means we need a five man because yeah. everybody yeah, plays well, Slardar because we see Ember Spirit we need a five man that's counterintuitive we don't want a five man against Ember Spirit you know what I mean like that's the meta right isn't that the meta I I don't know I just I, that I, word I, just gets thrown around no, so yeah. often it just it, it honestly kind of bugs me where it's like. Because the meta game, we need a five man. It's like, okay, explain to me in one fucking no, 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 sentence I, what the so meta game is. What, what, here's what I'm saying though: is I, I don't think at our skill level, like that, there's any level of consciousness about the meta, right? What I'm saying there is because you see Ember Spirit all the time. No, no, no I, I get that. I get the people are playing heroes that are are advertised as in meta. What I'm saying is, I on on the on the deeper sub level of the meta. I hate I hate throwing this term around too. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I I feel like what happens is you are you are rewarded just by the mechanics of the game by gathering together a, a team that is solid in five v five, and I think you end up being a more dominant team and have a, an easier time of winning a game when you work together as a team of five. I know that sounds okay. absurdly stupid. It sounds it does because uh, even at face value, I think a, a one MMR player can say. If I have five heroes that are stronger than their five heroes, no, but I and our five that, heroes I, fight their five heroes I, I, and beat them, we that, win. 
Like, right, right. But I no don't shit. think that's how people play. No, it's not, because people are fucking stupid, and I hate to say that, <laughs> yeah. but no, people are greedy. There's nothing uh, bigger and more of a problem about Dota 2 than greed, and that is, it, it's what causes arguments, it's what causes reports, it, it's what causes issues, is that, no, I need to farm, I don't need to be in the 5, man, you guys can 4v5, and guess what? You're pretty much always disadvantaged in a 4v5. Like, you are. You're down a man. So my whole comment is, like, I, I think that when teams unconsciously uh, wind up fighting more as 5, they get crazy rewarded for it. <laughs> well, just... Without them without them actively pursuing that that element of the meta. Well, think about it. It's not meta. I fucking hate that. It's AoE assist gold, okay? If you're in a 5-man fight right, and you win the 5-man fight... That's what I'm saying is that's an element of what has changed over the last patch or two, it, that AoE assist gold, like, all of that comes into play in the meta, right? That's why that's why it is good to have all five people around, and when you take on a fight or grab a pick-off, it's good to have everybody who's nearby who can participate in that pick-off to do so in order to gain that AoE gold, to, gra to gain a, a, better, uh, a better edge, a better advantage, because Dota's a, a game of inches, right? Every minor advantage that we snag helps us that much more. Sure. Let's get back to state of affairs. You go. I'll go ahead and finish mine. Um, I my party is twenty one ninety three, one higher than my solo, which is twenty one ninety two. I have played a fuck ton of games, and I've been somewhere around two thousand to. Uh, don't include the boundaries, 2,000 to 2,400, because I've never attained 2,400 on my solo. I've been 2,375 multiple times, 2,376, 2,375, 2,376, 2,375, 2,376. It's just a weird thing that I get, like, I don't know, I play worse in that 2,375 game that would make me 2,400 because I have it built up in my head. Like I said, I've been playing Bounty Hunter, Lich, and uh, Phoenix because of the meta. Uh, because of the team fight, they all have great team fight, right. and it's because of the meta, 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 and the meta helps me pick <laughs> these heroes because of the meta, um, is why I pick Phoenix, Weird, because yeah. of the meta and the team fight. Um, no, uh, Bounty Hunter is one, an awesome hero, um, because him, he, Lena, and a couple others have the ability to say, holy shit, I'm doing so good, I'm no longer a support, I can still help buy support items, but now I'm a semi-carry-ish ish I put yeah. on there. I am actually dishing out a good amount of damage because I have done so well and you are rewarded. I feel like with Bounty Hunter more than most heroes you are rewarded big time for doing well, right? Um, I go into a team fight and I track three dudes and we kill all three dudes and I get one of those kills. All of a sudden I have 2,000 gold. You know what I mean? Or 1,500 gold. Um, and I was just a, a support right before that 1,500 gold. Now I can start to consider like Maybe I build a Desolator. Oh my god, I can finish my Guardian Greaves. Uh, you know, maybe I'll get a Dagon. Like, it's he's a really cool hero in that he can transcend his own position, which I really, really, really love about Bounty Hunter. Phoenix, super badass. Um, it's, a, it's a skill shot hero, in my opinion. It is all about um, landing your Fire Spirits. I mean, landing them in not quick succession, but succession. Um, and it's still quick succession, but not like boom, 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 like boom, 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 boom. Uh, also the egg, planting the egg in a certain place. I should have put Undying on here as well because I've really been loving Undying because I feel like um, he is really calculated too in where you decay, in where you throw the tombstone. Uh, and then Lich, of course, um, I, I got started, I never finished the story, but Lich anyway, I was supporting an alchemist um, as Lich and it was... An amazing time. Uh, being what I would, I just made my rounds. My rounds were make sure Alchemist is doing okay. Uh, throw my uh, Q onto the enemy uh, mid hero, my my Frost Blast. Um, damage him a little bit. Go stack a camp, and then just keep making my rounds, getting my experience. Um, and then when Alchemist would stack the camps, guess who was there standing right next to Alchemist, leeching experience and leveling up really quickly. Uh, Lich was a blast to play. A Lich is a blast to play, and However easy he may be, like, yes, if somebody came up to me and said, I ne I want to play Dota 2, I've never played another MOBA, I would say, Lich is pretty easy, like, you should probably pop on Lich, and you can get the hang of things pretty quickly. But, there are, you you can really, I don't know, there is a skill cap to him, uh, which I which I like, and when to let go of that Chain Frost. Yeah. Which is, like, for instance, I was against a Slark today, and I had to wait for the Slark to Shadow Dance, uh, 
for Shadow Dance to be over before throwing the Chain Frost if he was with another guy. Because it's not going to bounce on him if he's in his black cloud of Shadow Dance. Right. So I would have to wait for that to be over. And that's something that, you know, was cool that, you know, it's just a little nuance of the game. Anyway, go ahead. No, I'm with you. I, uh, I've, I've always loved playing Lich. Uh, it's funny to hear you come around on him. Well, I, I just kind of discounted him as easy hero. Uh, I'm not interested in it. I'd rather get good at uh, another hero. And now, coming back to Lich, he can make a huge impact on a game. with um, and, it's, and like I was talking about, the speed of the game. Um, it, the, the speed of the game is much slower. You can think about what you're doing. You can definitely be there in time. You can react quickly, I feel like, because the game is so slowed down. Like if top lane's really getting really getting harassed, then all of a sudden they decide to die of top lane. Uh, the enemies decide to die of top lane. I'm there. Yeah. And I'm and I'm there. I, I can, you know, at least do a pretty good nuke. That his his uh, frost blast or Q or whatever the fuck it's called is really good. Uh, and hence my reason for kinda loving on him lately. Well, so I'm sitting at 23:13 on the party, uh, and after a seven-game run uh, over the course of like the last 36 hours, my solo is still right at 16.98. Uh, it's actually down from seven, like 17.22 or something. Hmm. Um, I had, I, I mean, I, I, I actually had some of the worst games, both won games and lost games, but the worst games I've played of Dota yet. Uh, yesterday, like I mean, I was losing faith. Just because the wounds are fresh, dude. Just because um, the wounds are fresh, they probably weren't. No, fully. they were. They were particularly bad. I, it was it, uh, at one point. So I'm going to tell this story. Uh, I told you yesterday, but for the stream, for the folks who download this tomorrow, um, this is my Dota horror story from yesterday, and I, I had several, but I, this one in particular, I'm, I'm I really love. Uh, so I'm, I'm playing on a team where we have a. a Winter Wyvern, who was supporting in the safe lane, uh, because of a lot of... I, I initially planned on running Doom in the off lane, and because of some crazy fuck-ups with team picks after the fact, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with the types that I'm talking about in solo queue, uh, had somebody else who wanted to pair up with me in the off lane uh, as a Slardar. And I was like, look, you just... Slardar, you go. You be a solo off lane Slardar. You get that XP, get whatever farm you can, play him like a carry, because the guy said he was playing as a semi-support. Um, and I'll just go into the jungle, dip into the jungle, grab some, grab my levels and farm that way. I'm doomed. I go, I'm doomed, baby. I can handle it. Uh, so I, I pop into the jungle, and we're on the Radiant side. I snag the big creep off of the hard camp with my consume, and I immediately bolt over to choke farm the Radiant small camp. Uh, I get there, I kill the first creep, and then after the first creep dies, I just see coming from the team Winter Wyvern, tight, no, tight, no, 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 no. And I'm, I'm like, what the, what the fuck is wrong? I'm like, what, and over my mic, I'm like, hey, what, what, what do you not want me to be doing right now? What, are, I'm, I'm jungling doom, like we discussed. What's going on? What's wrong? And he said, no, that's my camp. You're not allowed to have that camp. And I said, well, it's the beginning of greed, right? Mm -hmm. So I tell him, I'm like, look, this is not going to last long. I only need, I, I'm willing to save this camp for you. I just need to eat this camp while I get to level two and three. I'm just going to pop over, grab level two, grab level three, and then the camp is yours. Like, beyond, like, minute three, I'll never touch this small camp ever again. You don't need to pull right now. The lane is is nicely pushed. Uh, you need to be in lane harassing our carry, harassing the off lane so our carry can get his farm. And this guy says, no, that is not, no, no, that is not going to work. And I'm like, look, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> like, I'm going to eat this camp, and then I'm going to go and eat the other camps. And he said, okay, everybody, you heard it. In Doom's words, this is how it has to be. <laughs> he abandons the safe lane to follow me around in the jungle and just sits and waits and tries to steal my last hits. Initially, he's auto-attacking the creeps with me and just trying to snag them, but he, but I'm not an idiot, so I would let him auto-attack right to the point and then take the last hit. And then he realized what I was doing and started reversing his strategy to just literally sitting there, uh, letting me take damage if I stopped attacking, just completely fucking with me, uh, trying to steal the farm 
And I, I mean, I just, I pleaded with the guy. I said, look, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to mess with you. I'm not trying to steal your farm. I'm not doing anything, man. I'm trying to win the game. I'm trying to do my best here in the jungle, given the circumstances. And uh, his response to me was, no, this is the way it has to be. Your words. <laughs> yeah, you get those people. Uh, I mean, it was a game that we ended up winning. Um, and had people pleading. I mean, had had other people on the team pleading with the guy as well, who just, I mean, he just completely lost it. His name was Z-Man. If anybody runs into Z-Man down there in the the mid-1500s. <laughs> oh, isn't he an officer in our guild? I may, if, if he is, just just let me find him. <laughs> you know, because he's the biggest piece of shit that I've run into in a while in Dota. Oh, wow. Uh, no, I mean, it just, it made me, like, I mean, I was getting frustrated. And meanwhile, my girlfriend's sitting across from me on her new rig playing Fallout 4, and she looked over at me. She said, why do you play this game? And I was like, oh, it's not always, I, like, I, my initial response was, it's not always like this. It's like this game. <laughs> and then I'm like going to just sit and think. I was like, and I'm like, no, it's not always like this. It's only like this 80% of the time. Um, that was about the estimate. I disagree. That I, got. I disagree. I think um, also you go into a game with the attitude that you want, and I feel like you don't mute people. And that is definitely leads to frustration. I have no fucking problem. The second right. no, 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 one no, thing comes out of somebody's mouth that I don't I, like, they need it. You popped into my brain in that moment as far as how to deal with this guy. But he, he one, is not on the mic. Two, he's not being, like, aggressive in the chat. You still just mute him, then you just look at him like he's a winter wyvern and be like, you dumb winter wyvern. Okay, follow me around until you get bored. I'm not going to provoke you. You, and, and that's oh, the no, only reason he's continuing. Oh, no, man, this, even though we won this game, winter wyvern never left my side. Hmm. Whatever lane I TP'd to, he TP'd with me. Well, you know, like, you, you get assholes a, like that. No, I'm, but I'm saying, like, there, it was no joke. Like, this was a behavioral thing where he was, I mean, muting did nothing. This guy was with me the entire time. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, that initial argument when he's typing no, 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 and you're being and you're pleading with him, like, no, I need this before to get my level one and level two. That's when you just mute and you just take it anyway and be like, yeah, I do need this. So sorry. Uh, and you take it anyway because you know how your hero works and he doesn't uh, is what you have to assume. And you move on. And like, and that's, dude, I play solo, like, way too much. And I've got a lot of people with me. Um, and I don't mute lately, just because, like, for the stream, it's fun to, to have yeah, the people. To, to, I mean, it makes it you know, a lot more fun to have, like, the really toxic players in there. So the stream can kind of be like, you fucking, you know, I don't know. Like, I, agree I, with me and I, I commiserate. Don't... But I don't think muting was going to spare me the pain that was having that wyvern in the game. In fact, I may have muted him. Um, he, I mean, he did, um, he was doing shit like throwing down Winter's Curse on, on creeps I was attacking. That's fucked up. Um, I there's mean, also was... another thing that people don't know. Uh, under the share control tab up in the top left, you can say, uh, there's a button that says, don't accept help from this individual, which means they can't force staff you, they can't winter, they couldn't, they can't heal you, so you can make it so that Winter Wyvern couldn't heal you. Um, if you didn't want to. Well, thankfully, nothing like that ever occurred. So or, if somebody or, is... well. He did, at one point, he may have forced staffed me away from something, but... Yeah, you can, you, know. you can get, you can turn that off. So you can make it so a player on your team, if they're being horrible, cannot force staff you, cannot do, can literally cannot do anything to affect your gameplay, other than, I guess, like, body block you, or steal shit from you, or anything like that, but... That is something good to know. You you went out and gave your your uh, MMRs. Um, Doom, Winter Wyvern, and Huskar. Yeah, I pick the Wyvern whenever it's just pretty obvious that there has to be a support in the game. Um, though admittedly, my Wyvern win rate is going down playing her more in solo. Um, I, well, I mean, I'm not drastically, but I I feel like I I feel like I've been losing more with her in solo than I ever have in the party. Hmm. Um, and then uh, Huskar, I had a miserable game of Huskar yesterday, uh, where I was definitely the reason we lost that game. Uh, just an invoker got my number, and I, I, oh god, it was it was pathetic. I've been beaten by an invoker too, and it hurts every time. <laughs> it does, especially especially at the skill, skill level. level. <laughs> and I and I, and saying this skill level does mean something. Yeah, it does. There's with, with invokers in particular. One in a thousand invokers at two K make it above two K on that invoker, in my opinion. Like. You probably calibrated higher than 2k on Invoker if you're really a good Invoker. Like, I'm so sick of, like, 
I, I love it when I see the first pick invoker on the enemy team. Yeah. It's like, all right, <laughs> at least we've got a little bit of advantage. Let's take let's take advantage of the fact that they picked he invoker. He was a 2K invoker, admittedly. Oh. Uh, he was a 2K invoker. Uh, they, they, one of those situations where somebody was partied with a, an 1100 or something on the team. Uh, brought the averages weirdly or, you know, weirdly mm -hmm. into... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but yeah, he was a 2K, and he just completely wrecked me. But Husk, I've been having a lot of fun on because when you when you wreck with Husk, you wreck. Yeah, um, I had my uh, as you know, you were there. My days with Huskar, uh, where I was bad at the game, admittedly, right. uh, and yeah. and I played a shitload of Huskar mid. What my build with Huskar mid was similar to what people give me shit for in like Storm Spirit and Wind Ranger and other heroes that I bottle with, is that I would save all my starting gold and go uh, mask first, Morbid Mask, um, and get Morbid Mask out like the first item on Huskar, which I feel like is a huge mistake. Um, I don't looking think... Looking back on it. Looking back on it, yeah, I mean, you want speed with Huskar. You want... Um, a little bit of regen. You want to get that armlet as quickly as fucking possible. Yeah. Another thing for anybody out there that just buys armlet just to buy armlet, don't um, go into bot matches and practice with that armlet because yeah, if you're not going to use it, you may as well not. Have that it. item sucks if you don't use it. Like it, it's not that great of an item if you if you're not using it. Like if you're up against a sniper and you know that you're being um, assassinated, right? And you know that he is waiting to shoot you and you're low health, you just pop it off pop it back on and you live and it's great and it's an it's an item that can save your life it's an item that can give you god strength i build it on life stealer of course and i had a game where like god like me and that armlet were one like i plugged my like you know avatar tentacle into the armlet and like i just like knew my thoughts you know what i mean like yeah, sure, sure. it's just like me and that armlet were were fucking one and it was it was a blast that game but i remember all the other games like the probably 500 other games that i had built a goddamn armlet because armlet's good and I'm following the standard build and I build that armlet and it's like okay now I need to get an item that does something because I have this <laughs> armlet uh, and you turn it on and you just be like what the fuck is this I'm just dying like all it's doing is just hurting me like why do I want this item and it's just getting good with items is a hard thing I'm still struggling with BKB um, oh god yeah it's an item that like behooves me because I'm like, I like to, same with drums, and I've been building drums more and more lately, but I don't like items with, like, charges, because it's like, I, it, it makes me think, like, oh, I fucking wasted that charge. Like, I could have used... Or I didn't use that charge. Yeah, or, but yeah, you should be <laughs> looking the, the at classic, it. classic, like, yeah. wand scenario, where you look down and you're dead. And, and you see 17 wand yeah, charges, yeah. It's like, oh, Previously shit. 13. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's and that's kind of my problem with BKB is I get it and it's just this fresh, shiny, 10-second BKB and it's like, well, I'm going to wait for the most optimal moment to use this. We're watching Wazoo, like, there'll be a timber saw that throws a chakram at him, okay, just, meow, and he'll just turn it on and run right after that timber saw and fucking kill him. And he doesn't care that it's his 10-second or it's 5-second, he just, he needed to use BKB then. And it's just like, it's like almost a carnal uh, side of his mind that is thinking, okay, I don't want to get slowed by that chakram. I don't want to get damaged by that chakram. I'm just going to fucking turn on my BKB, run right through it, and go kill that fucking timber saw. Yeah. And I admire that in, in Wazoo is in that he he's built it so many times that he doesn't build it up in his mind. That this is some glorious item that, yeah. you, that if you waste your 10 second BKB charge. And I think the reason I think this is because every time somebody like uh, dies or, or fucks up or something and they say like, well, I got their BKB charge down. You know what I mean? Like using that justification, <laughs> yeah. or like, or they use their ult and they killed me, and it's like, isn't that what the ultimate is supposed to do? Isn't it supposed well, to kill other down. heroes? Ult down, yeah, ult down. <laughs> like I love that, where it's yeah. like Earthshaker's ult down. I'm brood mother. Earthshaker's ult down, so we can totally fight. I'm dead. I'm dead because he used it perfectly on me to get a kill. Yeah. But I'm dead, so you guys can go fight. Uh, <laughs> that, that is, I love those excuses. And the BKB one is one that I hear too often, uh, where it's like, well, two big BKBs are down. And like, yes, that means a ton. Like if we're knocking on their front door, taking a tier three and they blow their well, two it, BKBs, it, it does mean a lot. Thing is, it means a lot if, it means a lot if you follow up with it shortly after the BKB yeah. wears off. 
Yeah. It doesn't mean a lot if they pop the BKB, survive, and or got a kill in response to that, and then you've got to come back barreling down the lane after they pushed out again. Yeah. I mean, that's, anyway. Yeah, it means a lot. Like It, uh, it means a lot circumstantially. Or if, say... But people use it as, like, a, a justification for action all the time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Which, my favorite justification, just space-created. That's what I just use from here on out. <laughs> just space-created. Space no more excuses, just space-created. No, no, no. uh, but, no, uh, on the <laughs> other side of things, it does mean a lot when somebody's BKB's down. And maybe if, like, I'm playing Lich, and I get people to pop two BKBs when we're knocking on their tier three and then the rest of my team can follow up immediately. That means a ton. That means yeah. that my life, me dying actually was worth it. And I can say two BKBs are down. I'm dead, but two BKBs are down and Earthshaker uses all two BKBs are down. Like then at that point, it's like, okay, that's good. Uh, we don't have a giant team fight ult and we don't have to deal with two magic immune motherfuckers. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm out in the enemy jungle and a guy uses a BKB because we're of equal level and the BKB helped him kill me and I say BKB is down, it's like, yeah, he used the BKB to kill me and one, you know, one less second on his BKB, probably worth it to get a kill. Like, I think that's the whole well, point. Uh, that's what it's there for. Yeah. I, that's, so, that's exactly what it's there for. I don't know. Um, so let's let's move on because this is fast becoming another Dota two show this week. Yeah, it is. That's <laughs> uh, let's let's do a little news. Okay, uh, pull that up. Uh, let's start with uh, just Article One because that's one that I definitely want to get into and see you know what you think about it. Because I, I sure, 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 sure. Um, let's do start with Article One. Um, go ahead and tell us about this. Uh, so this is just kind of a, an op-ed piece <clears throat> that was, well, op-ed and, and discussing kind of some issues that they're currently facing. Uh, in an ever-cluttered PC market, Valve Steam machines are undergoing an existential crisis. This Ooh. is digital trends. By Gabe Carey, not yeah. Gabe Newell. <laughs> oh. Um, oh. <laughs> but uh, another Gabe. Uh, so they're talking about how uh, earlier this month, Valve and its partners finally released the Steam machines. Companies alleged solution to an ongoing setback for PC gaming, a lack of accessibility. Uh, to sum up the basics of this article, kind of what they're talking about is it's it's so in between console and PC gaming that they're not finding any. Who, who, they don't know who the hell to market this to or who the hell to sell it to. Um, but, you know, you look at you. Not and me. me. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna buy one. Yeah. I, I well, Okay, I'll, I'll say this. If it was cheap enough, I might buy one to bring one inside the house. When we first started talking about Steam Machines, uh, mm -hmm. oh, like 10 months ago, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we even mentioned on the show, um, I was in the process of kind of exiting my console gaming phase in life and was moving towards PC gaming, uh, because of, largely because of Dota 2. Um, and there, there was a time when I was like, all right, well, maybe for me, a really great solution would be if you scroll up on this so that they can see. I showed them that. Um, you know, there's that Alienware Alpha. And that was the first thing. That was actually one of the first that I ever kind of looked at was that Alienware Alpha. Um, and I thought that might be a good solution for me to play my Dota 2, right? Mm -hmm. Not to, uh, you know, not to um, have to invest heavily into a PC. But that being said the cost of these things is nearly outrageous for anything that runs really well. For How instance, much? Uh, so I think the low-end Alien Alphaware, uh, let me pull up that article real quick and see if they discuss it, but I think it's somewhere around $500. But it's 500 bucks for some onboard, yeah, let's see, hardware can be originally control, rigidly controlled in a $500 Steam machine that's had its components pre-selected and isn't upgradable. Is it integrated graphics? It's well, it's not integrated graphics. It's an I NVIDIA GTX GPU, but it's okay. it's not it's not a nine. You're not running a GTX 960 or a GTX 970. That's not a or a, a G, you know a GeForce Titan. Yeah. That, it's not that level of, of you know capability in a graphics card. And they're running i3 processors, so they're running a, i3. They're running i3s. Um, you know, so if you're paying 500 bucks for an i3 processor and like a low-end, you know, NVIDIA graphics card, I mean, shit, you'd be better off investing that into maybe the same things in a PC that you could piecemeal upgrade along the way. Um, they're forcing everybody to run that Steam OS, and what they're finding is that the Steam OS isn't compatible with a lot of games. So you you wind up you have no idea whenever you buy one of these, you have no idea if you buy a Steam machine. If you're going to be able to run, um, you know, a particular PC game that you'd like to have, whereas 
you know, if you're talking about like The Witcher 3, for instance, which is cross platform, right? It's on PC mm-hmm. and on other games, on, on, on consoles. You could, you could play The Witcher 3 on your Xbox One for sure. But could you play it on the Steam machine? And it's optimized for Xbox One because when you go in, when you go to Best Buy or wherever, I guess you can download game. You can download games from Microsoft directly now. But when you go and you buy that physical copy, you know that when you put that in your Xbox One, it's going to load up and it's going to work perfectly. And that is always like ever ever since consoles have come out. Have you ever bought a yeah. console and put put a game in and been like, ah, oh, damn, this game doesn't work well with my console? And it's like, no, that game is built for or that no, console. I need more RAM in my Xbox before I run that. <laughs> yeah, no, no my, the, that doesn't yeah, happen. No, I mean, it never, it never happens, but, but it, and will it never happen would. The Steam machine, which is supposed to, like, because the original concept was, oh, we'll steal all those console gamers by getting them to pick up our Steam machines because they're just like consoles. But they don't have. No, they're, they're still computers. They just look like a console. And they well, have an i3 processor. I'm sure an Xbox One has a better. Better than an i3. Well, even if it does have an i3, the games are as, optimized as, are optimized to run on an i3 on that i3. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's not an i3. I'm sure it's some offshoot or you know whatever it is. But um, they also let's see. So the other big issue they're having is with like storage space on 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 because these. these games are huge. Well, and they don't. They you can't upgrade them. You you can't upgrade the Steam machine. Oh, they, so uh, delete a game and. Uh... Redownload one, I guess. So Falcon Northwest, and they mentioned in this article, they were going to, they canceled their entire run of Steam machines. They were about to launch oh. and get these on shelves, and a week beforehand they said no. Uh, one of the reasons that they gave was that, for instance, Steam OS only allows for one hard disk, which makes it difficult for OEMs like Falcon Northwest to save on solid state, uh, solid state drive storage. Rather than shipping a Steam machine with a solid state drive, and including extra hard drive bays for additional disk space, the company would have to either bundle a high-capacity drive, drastically, potentially drastically raising the cost of the machine, or expect consumers to buy a replacement drive every time they want to upgrade their storage. Meaning, you you know, you'd have to go in, like you couldn't, you, you remember on the old consoles you had to get memory cards? I mean, yeah, but no... that was fine. That was like an, it was, you know, some sort of like uh, ancillary, uh, just, and it was always like, the, I remember that for, um, I think it was uh, Nintendo. I remember the Game Sharks for Nintendo, too. I remember anyway. the N64. Or, or yeah, the N64. Memory card. Where you could just pop it into your controller. But, I mean, so they're not really even allowing for, like, an option like this. Like, you would actually have to break open the machine and replace the entire the, the entire hard drive. And it's like, well, at that point, aren't you just building a computer? Yeah, just you go know? to Amazon.com. <laughs> yeah. Do you need seven parts? We discerned this yeah, uh, recently. Yeah. You need seven yeah. parts to build a computer. And then click through our Amazon banner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely click through... Uh, uh, right here, uh, yeah. Just go ahead and uh, click, uh, yeah, right so on that one, Amazon banner. One last interesting tidbit from this article that I, I thought was pretty fascinating was they were talking about um, that how confusing they are because of the variety of configurations. They were talking about how Falcon Northwest was using a Tiki Steam machine, is what they were calling it, uh, to show off how it could run Unreal Tournament at 4K resolution. Are we talking like Unreal Tournament from the 90s? Well, the current Unreal Tournament that's out there. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so it, that was at, a fun game. At 4K resolution, which is pretty fascinating. But then they were talking about how, so, you know, say you're, say you're, uh, you're Joe Schmo, your average Joe, you're out there and you see this and you're like, oh my God, I gotta get me one of the Steam machines. I love Unreal Tournament. I'd love to play that thing at 4K resolution. Well, if you go and buy an Alienware Alpha, it struggles to run... It, the Alienware Alpha struggles to handle the same title, Unreal Tournament, at 1080p. So the really expensive Alienware computers struggle to run it at 1080p? Yeah, well, the the expensive... Expensive by comparison to PCs. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, uh, yeah. You could... There are, ver- you know, there are variations. I mean, you can get an Alienware Alpha that's like an i7. In fact, I'll pull it up real quick on... on uh, oh, Google, and everybody gets to me tight. Yeah, on that clickety clacker, dude. Huh, so I think the Steam Machines are a bust. Let's go back to uh, fixing Dota 2 up. Let's uh, get that hero thing. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's focus on what we do have and not what we want to have. Uh, here at Steam Incorporated, I just got okay, hired so today. Here's the price range. Ra- <laughs> here's the price range, real quick. Okay. Yeah. 450 bucks gets you uh, the. 4th Gen i3, and 650 gets you the i7. 
they all, except for that 450 model, all come with 8 gigs of memory and a terabyte hard drive. But they're all using that GTX GPU. Something cool. 650, I mean, I guess that's not bad. I paid $60 for my terabyte hard drive, so that's like being advertised as though it's like something badass. Like, I have a six, I have a terabyte hard drive that I think was fifty nine ninety nine, and then I have a terabyte external hard drive that I think was that same price. Like, cool. Oh, like man. those video cards, the video cards only have two gigs of onboard video memory. Yeah. See. Um, I don't know. I. I. I mean, it, in my opinion, it's definitely not worth it. It does sound like Valve's maybe misstepped a little bit. Well, they're so Valve's problem is they're just so fucking ambitious, and ambition can be your downfall sometimes when it's like. Uh, Hey, that's a really good idea. Hey, there are a ton of console gamers. They're playing Call of Duty. They're playing Halo. Let's fucking get them on our side by building a computer that looks like a console. Hey, Jim, that was a fucking great idea. Let's go to a yoga session together, and let's talk about it in our yoga session. Because we're in Seattle, Washington. Let's maybe smoke a spliff and keep talking about this idea, and then call a bunch of manufacturers, and then go bankrupt. And I can't play Dota 2 anymore. So uh, well, let's not do okay. that. In that case, pull up article number three. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We will We'll go ahead and we'll uh, look at article number three. So Dota 2's revenues have been sliding even as worldwide digital sales have reached $5.5 billion in October. Uh, this article is a little bit older. It's uh, from late November, November 24, on uh, VentureBeat. But... Basically, what they're saying is October was the biggest month of the year for digital game sales. Uh, that's, but it didn't help Dota 2. Uh, the most important, even with Alchemist, there it didn't help Dota 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the biggest thing is that Dota 2 is no longer in the top five highest earning free-to-play PC games. What? What? Uh, what is? Uh, League of Legends is number one. Uh, Clash of Clans. Clash uh, of Clans, a phone game. Yeah, they don't list the other top five. Oh, here we go. Top five games across digital platforms. League of Legends on um, free-to-play. League of Legends, Crossfire. Th these are MMOs. League of Legends, Crossfire, uh, Dungeon Fighter Online, World of Tanks, and oh my. Maple Story. World Maple Story was made by Nexon, which is also my, the first. Remember Nexus TK? I was talking about it that I played. It was my first MMO. Yeah, that's who made Maple Story. So a, a game that I played back in like '96 is beating a game that came out. I don't even know if Dota 2's come out. Are we still in beta? Yeah, because that's kind of how it feels, doesn't it? Um, wow. So you know they're trying to blame it on things like Fallout 4 coming out and well, like but... Fallout 4 came out for everybody who plays League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yep. So <laughs> I sure do. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I I don't know things aren't. Things aren't working great over there for Steam. Uh, I guess, real quick, to just get the last Valve article out of the way, pull up Article 2. Um, Steam added a new feature. For those of you who wanted to do this, you can now permanently remove a game from your account. Permanently. Okay. Um, What's the... Why? Don't know. So, <laughs> I don't know. So, fuck this game. Fuck like this game, I'm never gonna play. Like, like if I get There's, really mad at Dota 2, like I can never have it again. So, yeah, if you scroll down to the very bottom of that article, you can see uh, they've got a little window that says where you know what you, pops up. You're, you yeah. select the issue. I want to permanently remove this game from my account. Uh, yeah. You are asking us to permanently remove Amputee from your account. Please carefully review the list of products you will no longer own below. Oh. Amputee. I love your, your options there. Okay, remove the list of games from my account permanently or no, I changed my mind. <laughs> not, <laughs> no, not Dota 2. I like Dota 2 still. <laughs> Let's not permanently oh remove it. That's what I'm going to do someday. It's going to really fuck with you. Oh, dude, could you imagine, like, I can see myself being like, you know what, I need to change the pace in my life. I need, I'm playing way too much Dota 2, I'm just going to permanently delete it, go to bed, wake up the next day, come out here with my fresh cup of Red Bull, and what the fuck? I can't play, I wonder if it, like, permanently deletes, like, my MMR and I start all over again. Yeah, I I, hmm. I would assume, I would assume that you can just re-download it because it's free to play, but I, I wonder if it would remove your cosmetics and all that, you know? <laughs> Uh, so anyway. They would be, probably be happy to remove those cosmetics. It might fix their broken market. <laughs> oh. They do need to hire hire me. Like you don't, you guys 
even if you have an economist, he sucks. Like, you need to hire, like, I could probably do a pretty good job of maybe bringing the, bringing the money back in from the market. First and foremost, let's be able to trade items. Let's be able to sell items on a market, okay? Let's not do this compendium bullshit where we're giving away free sets anymore. Let's make sets something to be coveted. Like uh, when I first started playing Dota and I was like, oh my god, that item is so cool. I covet that item. Okay, let's, let's bring that back, right? Doesn't that drive a market when you want something really bad? Or when you're just like, meh, I've got seven immortals. Eh, let's just make 15 more immortals for the next major. And let's just... No more crowdfunding. We'll just do three mil every single time. Like, everything that I, like, loved about the game is kind of being stripped away little by little, layer by layer. Like, the crowdfunding was really fun to see that it's like, yeah, I will buy this set. I already own every item in this set, but I want to see TI5 be the biggest tournament ever. And it was. And I helped. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. I put in 15 20 $25 into that when all was said and done um, from, from the 25% cut. But I, you know, helped pay, you know, for I Team EG. Think. And I, that's something that's like, you know, it's like kind of like a taxpayer. Like, yeah, this is my park. Like, I can go play at this park because I, I pay I, taxes. I suspect, and this is me being, you know, a pessimist, I, I suspect that it's because they, you know, we've discussed these numbers before, but... Um, their what was the prize pool for TI five again? Like eighteen six. So or something. Twenty five percent of that from the sale of compendium or compendium related items means that they made uh, somewhere around seventy six million off of the compendiums. I think we were maybe it wasn't eighteen million because I thought we were saying that they made no, like sixty five million. I think it was eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> let's say seventy million. Okay. And they paid out eighteen to the players. Mm -hmm. uh, I think somebody at Valve looked at that and said, boy, we're leaving a lot of money on the fucking table. I, I think somebody said, hey, you know, if we capped these prize pools or if we just went out and we're like, hey, guess what, everybody? Here's $3 million. Well, if you look at Riot, okay, uh, the last, like, three years, they do a global tournament, okay, for League of Legends. And it's been $2 million for the last three years. Yet they make way, way more money off of League of Legends. Like, Riot is... Uh, I had some statistics for that uh, League of Legends comparison yeah, well, I mean, show. we've discussed them on the show before. But they make... They basically have one game, right? Riot, pretty much... Uh, we were talking with a League of Legends player who is probably somewhere around 5k MMR. He's top 90... Or top 5% uh, or top 10% or something like that of players. Um, anyway, he's really, really good. And he's like... And I asked him, I was like, does Riot own anything other than League of Legends? And he's like, no. Uh, so they own one game, and they make a shit ton of money. Valve owns, you know, what? I, mean, I can think of three right yeah, off the bat. Counter-Strike. When you go to RiotGames.com and you click on the tab Games, the only thing that comes up is League of Legends. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so they... Yeah, they're, that's what they're all they about. They focus on us, and they make a shitload of money. People buy cosmetics for their pixelated characters. People like it, whatever, like... Um, uh, Sam, who well, was on the show yeah. last Monday, brought up a good point, and he said that if you're playing a MOBA for graphics, you're probably not going to play that MOBA for very long, because yeah, it doesn't really matter. Game, they're way better games, graphic-wise. Graphic yeah, like, go good. play Far Cry if you want to yeah. have a crazy graphical experience. Or hell, Ark. Or, yeah, <laughs> okay. Ark. Uh, Far Cry still, I think, out, out does uh, Ark, but yeah, Ark it was an amazing experience, because you could actually change the landscape. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, I guess in kind of reference to that, it does seem like Valve is as much as everybody. I don't know. You remember when we had uh, like a string of guests on the show, and everybody was like, "No, Valve will never do what do, do what Riot does." Valve they're looking do at them, Riot. and they're like, "Okay, <laughs> they're doing we're, it right." <laughs> yes, they're like, "Okay, Riot still has more people than us, controls everything, yep. puts out for the even though they're growing over the last three years." They're still putting out the same prize pool for their global once a year tournament. Once a year tournament, okay? Once a year tournament. Let me say that again because I'm sure seven tournaments are going on right now, and poor Mott's voice has probably gone out by now. So, uh, like, I mean, they're... well, I mean, I mean, they're starting to mimic them in other ways because you know you had Sam on on that league league episode talking about how uh, the cosmetics are only bought through Riot. I mean, we're starting to see more and more cosmetics coming out of Valve that are not tradable, not marketable, not giftable. Um, so stupid. You know, we're starting to see a lot of that. 
Uh, Valve is stepping in, taking control of the tournaments and control of the professional scene to a degree, uh, which is something that like everybody screamed to the high heavens would never happen. I was to, when, when I, I was I was a new for thinking that that was even a possibility. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. They're just going to lose the highlight. Um, like I told you, Dota 2 is not the game to bring esports into everybody's home. Um, you well, know, I mean, I think I think everybody's kind of always known that. Just well, I don't know. It's so it's so complex. With StarCraft 2, uh, also in a very, very complex game. Um, more complex in micromanagement. So, like, at a face value, you can understand StarCraft pretty quickly. But to be good at StarCraft, it takes a lot longer. Whereas right. Dota, to understand all the interactions it takes... Uh, I've been playing for a year and a half, <laughs> and I still don't know all the I, interactions. I don't know. I, I think you... I, so, all right, well, here's an interesting... To close out the show, let's po let's posit this together. What do you think are the elements of a video game that must be met in order for it to break into the mainstream? And by break into the mainstream, I mean... I know not, what you mean. Not like, not overtake traditional sports. But be um, a contender, or be somewhere near a contender. Take, take a solid market share. And by solid market share, let's say... Like 5% even, like, yeah. uh, would yeah. be solid. Um, well, obviously, competition. Yeah, you know, it has, to, it has to have competition. And you can't just sit there and watch some guy build a house in Minecraft. Um, as much as people do that, they still do, and people watch Minecraft streams all the time and watch cool, elaborate things we built. There's no inherent competition. There's no reason for me to get drunk with my buddies and scream and yell or and root for somebody. And root for somebody. So yes, uh, I'm not going to root for that guy to build a house. Yes, I'm I just not. <laughs> I think the next game also. Um, I think it it needs to have smaller teams. I think you uh, need to either have bigger teams or smaller teams or better managed teams or just maybe more maturity um the next the next game that comes out hopefully when the scene is starting because every scene starts i remember when the starcraft 2 scene started See, and I, I, I wasn't around for the dota 2 scene to start but you know uh, we've seen well, but even with starcraft 2 like i think you I, you know so i think if you took the 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 average non-video game player and showed them starcraft 2 they can understand who's winning and who's losing no, I don't think so. I, I think I, so. Uh, I, yeah. Oh, I absolutely but think I, so. Not, not with any interest in why or what's going on. Sure. You know, like uh, I, I sure I maybe I know because oh, the the blue guy sure has a lot more people on the map, or sure has a lot yeah. more units. You know. So we were we were hypothesizing that uh, that Rocket League would re really take off, and I think that Rocket League has. It won't take. I don't think Rocket League will no, be the game, I mean, but it has the components to take off. In I, that, I agree. it's quick and it it's it's too quick. Um, it's it needs Maybe. to be a little longer. Um, you you don't want five minutes. You want a little bit longer than five minutes. You want your game to be an hour, but you want that to be the, the entire Rocket game. League, Rocket League is on track in that it's easy to understand where the action is yeah. located, like what the goal mm -hmm. is. When you know something is like, I think the average person would sit down and look at Rocket League and see you make an epic save, and go, "Holy shit, that guy got there fast!" Oh, holy shit, that guy got there and defended that goal. Yeah, so easily understandable. I I definitely agree with you there. But the problem with easily understandable is that it has to have a high skill cap. Uh, like Lich, for right. instance. But it also has to be easy to play. Yeah, Lich, for instance. Easy to play, yes, you can get really good with Lich. You can be a really, really good Lich, but you can start your Dota 2 career playing Lich. It needs to, like, I'm going to use that as an analogy for an entire game in that you need to be able to look at it. I need to be able to sit on my couch and uh, just like I was watching Futurama today, I was watching uh, Into the Wild Green Yonder, the movie. And it was, it was, they were making fun of poker and they're like, for those of you who just woke up and left ESPN on, welcome to yeah. the World Series of Poker. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's like, you know, that's exactly how poker was is, is you would, you would turn it on and be like, ah, fuck it, I'll watch this, I guess, for a little while. Um, but you still well, understood what, what was going on. Yeah, and that, I think that's because poker is a more household game. It is more household, general. sure. But I mean, the game itself pretty easy to understand okay things match up well, it's and money a pair when, of games when you have yeah. money to throw behind it i think what make i think when you when you see the average person watching a poker game on television 
uh, whether that's the World Series of Poker, or like high stakes poker, or anything like that. I think it's seeing those dollar figures behind it that make them sit and watch a hand with interest. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. oh, fuck yeah. I, I don't, you know, I don't think a video. I, I think that a video game is not going to have anything very comparable. So yeah, well, I think a video game needs to. So if a video game is ever going to break breakthrough, it's got to have three very very important components, which is competition, uh, maturity, um, and simplicity. I would say those would be the three biggest things. And I think it's got to be a spectacle to, to watch sure. to a degree as well. That's where the and simplicity. That's where the simplicity umbrella comes in, and that I can turn it on and I can say I have never seen this video game before, but I know that that whatever has to do that to win. Um, and very easily within one game, football, for instance, I know sh fuck all about football, but I know that the dude has to throw it to that guy and he has to run into a zone. You know what I mean? Very simple. Very, very simple. Hard to do. Hard to be really good at. People, you know, prep their kids from age I don't know, zero when on. That, when you say that, though, I was trying to think about, like, the easiest games to explain, the easiest sports to explain. Golf. <clears throat> hit it in the hole. Yet, you know, it's a huge spectator sport. It takes a ton of skill. Soccer. Hit it in the net. You know what I mean? Like, they're all... Yes, it but requires defense the, and everything. When you, when you get into the minutia of the rules, though, that go along with those sports, like baseball and football... I don't need to know those rules, though, to appreciate it. You know what I mean? I can still sit down and watch it and say, oh, that was a good but, pass. And I'm playing devil's advocate and kind of mm -hmm. defending Dota and video games here. Um, but you do need to understand that minutia, I think, in order to enjoy and continue to have a desire to follow it, maybe. Sure. And I think if, say, I, I've never seen football, I've lived under a rock my entire life, and uh, I turn on my first football football game and I say, wow, this is pretty cool. I get the basic idea, they're throwing this ball around, touchdown is when the opposite team makes it to the other side, and so on. That Now I'm interested. I'm hooked. There's the hook. Now it's pulling me in. Oh, what is offsides? What? Penalty? Why? Maybe I'm going to research that. Maybe I'm going to start to understand what offsides means. What is this, uh, you know, I, I don't know enough about football to even throw out examples, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying like... Flag on the play. Yeah, like why is this referee doing this? And it, it naturally, curiosity will, will come with interest, with a hook. Um, you know, with any sport, look at any sport. Like, even the more complex ones that people, you would say, wouldn't watch, like cricket or rugby, still very, very simple to say, I know that team's winning because I just saw that happen. I don't know that I could look at a cricket game or a rugby game and tell you who was winning. It's ball in net. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? They yeah. are all ball in net. But I guess, so, I, I don't know. So here's, here's... And there's a score, too. The thing with Dota is that it's deceptive. That just because it's That's 20 true. kills to 40 kills... The, that doesn't mean it's yeah, the game's no, over. Almost no other sport where it's quite like that. No, I mean when it's over, when the clock runs out, whatever. Whereas, I mean, you can look at that. That's one advantage Rocket League definitely has. Yeah, a score. <laughs> I don't know. For me, for my money, like Rocket League, Rocket League actually seems like maybe one of the better bets of games that could get out there. But Something I mean, like Rocket League. We've had MLG for a long time now. We've we've had these competitive esports leagues. Um. I don't think it'll be a shooter. I really don't think no, it'll, I don't it'll be a shooter. I think shooters get dull after a while. I think, right. well, I, I mean, it's just something and that there's you... there's always a new shooter to be had. There's always a new shooter. And also, uh, like, if you go onto YouTube right now and you type in best Halo moments ever, and you watch that for a while, it's cool. You know what I mean? Like, well, and they the, start to look the same. They start <laughs> to look the same. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at. Is that, like, cool. You know what I mean? Whereas, like... Go type in like best but soccer moments of all time. But don't most home runs look the same too? No, no. I'm, I'm I will argue absolutely against that. Uh, we went to some Real soccer game and it, it kind of piqued my interest in soccer. Okay, uh, football uh, in any other country other than the United States. Um, and I, he, uh, a, a friend of mine said you should go on YouTube and watch David Beckham's corner kicks or whatever the fuck they're called. Okay. And it really is truly remarkable what he has trained his his body to do. What he is what he is trained to do with a soccer ball, where he can literally put such a spin on it and bend it in, and you know the bend it like Beckham, you know, uh, reference where he can be parallel with the goal yet still kick a soccer ball in the goal. Uh, that is something that you can look at and you can say, I know I can't do that. I know that if I were standing on that same soccer field, 
I myself could not do that. No way. Um, you see that with football. You see that with, with baseball. You see that with basketball. With Dota, I don't, if I've never played Dota, I don't know if I could do what Sumail does. Like, I, if I've never played Dota and I turned that on and I saw him playing Storm Spirit and he's zipping and he got a long range zip and it blew up, but he got a triple kill or something like that. Would I look at that and be like, holy shit, I could never do that. Never, ever, ever could I do that. No, I'd be like, he's playing some video game and yeah, I'm sure if I played video games all day and didn't go to school, I could probably do that too. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. the general consensus like in America, right? Like too much video games, you didn't focus on school. It's you're not skillful. You just have played it too much. No, Sumail is actually extremely talented. He is actually a prodigy. He is moving and thinking and making really good decisions really quickly. And I would argue it is just as skilled as David Beckham is to soccer as he is to Dota. Um, but watching that as a spectator, I can say that, no, David okay. Beckham has put way more skill into it. So here's my final question for you. <clears throat> it's a, it's a two-parter. Do you think that the general public will ever value that type of skill like they value David Beckham's type of skill? Yes. And do you think that there will ever be an eSport single game that persists? I hope. So uh, the first part of your question, simplicity, okay? The soccer is very, very simple. You kick the ball, right? Break it down to its simplest form. You, there are two nets on either side. You kick it in, the, you know, and you win. There's a guy trying to block it, right? That's why it's so it's so easy to see from a person who doesn't even know shit about soccer. I don't even know how many people are on the field. I don't even know. I think there's probably like, I don't even know what the positions are called or whatever. Between 2 and 15. Yeah, like there's, you could tell me there are 40 people on the soccer field at any time and I would totally believe you. But <laughs> I can go to YouTube and I can watch a, a certain kick or a certain play from soccer. And it is so simple that the magnificent plays look amazing. They look out of this world, I could never do it. Um, could that happen in a video game? Yes, but it needs to be simple. And like I said, what I mean, I don't, I can't even fathom it. It's, it's, I'm, I know that I'm being, it feels like I'm being like, uh, yes, I believe in it, but I don't know how it would be done. Um, and that's, you know, time will only tell, but I believe it can be done. And the answer to your second question is, I hope that there is a singular game that takes over. Um, I think it would be really fun for it to be a pastime that it's it's like synonymous with football, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you're going to go watch this, and it's a video game, you know what I mean? And it is a video game that's been persisting for 15 years, and guess what? The video game is keeping up uh, with graphically or whatever it needs to. It's changing, or that would be the thing, is that it can't change. Um, these video yeah. games... Well, not for it to stay mainstream. No, not... I, I no. have the opinion that... It has to stay the exact same. It has to stay... The second football was created, no, no new rules. Maybe there yeah, have been new there rules. There are tons of new rules. Okay. Um, I mean, for instance, like, but, they, they just change, like, the, the length of the goalposts, for instance. Okay. You know, they do little things like that along the way. Then do little things like that. Don't do, like, uh, you know, because you, you kind of have to. Like, we're all, we're all looking forward to this major patch, right? This major patch that's going to come out sometime in mid-December. It's getting close to mid-December. Where we'll probably have some new items, maybe a new hero, and it's going to change the game. Remember 6.84? We had a tournament oh, yeah. game that day. And yeah. we were we were reading through and like, okay, there's these magic mangoes. There, I bet those are going to be really good. Totally wrong on that. I mean, like, yes. Hey, I pick no. up mangoes on Doom before people do People do pick up mangoes, but I'm just saying, are they mainstream in Dota 2? No. Um, people pick them up and they're like, look at me, I have a mango, I'm cultured. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a, you know, I go to Starbucks to get my coffee type thing. Like, yeah, sure. I carry a magic mango when I'm playing this hero. Um, and then you see these items like Glimmer Cave that so many people, I was watching an old game of ours where some, some people were casting that game that we had that day. And they're like, they, for one, they could not for the life of them say Octarine. It was like Octrine, 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 and they just they just did not Octrine. notice Octrine. I think is what they were saying something. Anyway, they were saying that uh, um, Lotus Orb would definitely be the number one item bought, 
and the Octarine Core, that's just stupid. Who would ever want 25% <laughs> off their spell reduction? And that Glimmer Cape is lame. And this is back when Glimmer Cape didn't cost mana, had like 72% magic resist when it was cast, and had a cooldown that was shorter than it was now. Or shorter than it is now. And and they're and they were giving me shit because I played a sniper with a glimmer cape uh that game because it was cheap. It was it was cheaper than a shadow blade, that's for I sure. Remember it, well. it cost no money, uh you know, or no mana, excuse I, me. I think their point at the time though was that you could have built it. You could have built with the. We wrecked chain. that game, by the way, and yeah, it was, we, did. we did, and it was yeah. absolutely cool. And that, and it, you can no, find that the, game on the YouTube. The point was that you could have built uh, the Shadow Blade into a Silver, uh, a Silver Edge. Edge at the time. And of course, you know, I don't blame them because the patch came out the day of these games, and they were like, yeah, "Couldn't he build it into that? Not to blame you. Couldn't he build it in that dual hooky?" Uh, and, um, I don't, yeah. and, you know, at that point I wasn't even thinking of the mute that Silver Edge does. So. Okay, hold up. So we, we are, we're, we're going way over time here. Okay. We, we are running way late. I've got a quick uh, thing to add. Okay. Abaddon seems impossible to kill, right? Silver Edge, he dies. No ult. Oh, Silver Edge disa disables his ult? Yep. Did not know that. Super badass. So you want to kill Abaddon? Buy a Silver Edge. <laughs> okay. Well, picking up Silver Edge. Next Abaddon mm -hmm. game. Yes, yep. sir. It's so cool. I just recently found that out that it mutes him. It takes it away. Uh, no. So Silent or uh, Abaddon's ult will not or will work when Silence will not work when muted, uh, which is what Silver Edge does. So you have five seconds to kill him after the Silver Edge. Oh, okay, Gushi says because you need to cast it, it isn't, it isn't automatic. You don't need to cast uh, his ult; it is automatic. Evidence. Yeah, I'm confused what he's referencing. Now. Yeah, me too. Oh well. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get to it later, Gushi. Sorry, <laughs> Gush. We love you, Gush. I love Gushers. I hate Thanks to everybody who popped in. Those I ate Gushers when I was a kid. Um, um, um. Oh my god. Uh, I'm going to close this out. If you guys want to find us, we are at defenseofthepatients.com. You can follow us on Twitter at .p underscore show. We are on YouTube.ptv1, where you can find VODs like this one and others. Uh, I'm just watching your gooshy eating <laughs> mechanisms. <laughs> And the mind Come on, screen. roll Very in. Very disturbing. Siphus on. on iTunes, <laughs> Defense of the Patients, you can find us there. Uh, when you go to defenseofthepatients.com, though, definitely click on the Amazon banner. Uh, if you're going to build that new computer, if you're going to avoid building that Steam machine, because, hey, that's a mistake, as we learned today. I can go ahead and show the Amazon oh, yeah, banner. Yeah, I'll let you do that. Uh, problem is, is uh, this isn't, it didn't change over to 1080p, but here's defenseofthepatients.com, the banner would be over to the right. That's right, folks. So if you just click on that banner, we get a little bit of cut of whatever you buy. It does not increase the cost of whatever you purchase through Amazon. They just kick us a cut for sending you their way. I need to stop you. You are probably going to go that way anyway. I need to stop you. Oh, okay. Why is that? Because we need to sing happy birthday. Oh, no. For Jay Gucci. Oh, no. I have a terrible... A terrible happy sense. birthday to <laughs> Gucci. Happy birthday to Gucci. Okay, there you go, Gucci. There's your shout out. Your B Day shout out, Gucci. Yeah, yeah there Gucci you go. is the man who runs the Reddit, folks. You should also check that out. Uh, that's at reddit.com. By the way, he's Ice Frog. I mean, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Ice Frog <laughs> is on Defense of the Patient side. So. Yeah, it's Jay Gucci. It's, it's, Jay it's Gucci. the Gushikin. Uh, but yeah, check out the subreddit. He posts all the latest episodes there. Uh, anything that's kind of going on in the community, you can find out about. Uh, we're trying to continue doing the in-houses on a weekly basis, uh, so tons mm -hmm. of good stuff. Uh, tomorrow coming up is Try Hard Tuesdays with Blue and Wazoo. They're going to talk about being tryhards in Dota 2. Mm -hmm. You can also check out uh, the. Wait, let's do a plug for the Wednesday show and the Thursday show too, because that Wednesday. It's show called is... the Wednesday show as as of now. There's no name yet been decided, but uh, it it has Korean barbecue. He is the Chinese translator for all the big tournaments. Um, they're they're pretty much picking kind of a, super a Dota professional. Two insider. I played. Uh, if you go to previous broadcast, uh, it will you'll see me, Gorgon, Fafnir, Ursi, and Korean barbecue playing Dota all day today. It was the highest skill I've ever played. It was, uh, and... Did you get wrecked? A couple of games, but uh, Korean Barbecue said I was playing on a way higher level than 2K with my Warlock. So, wow. Yes. Uh, That's I, a compliment and a half. I was uh, kicking ass that game. I had Refresher Ags, and we were doing really well. But that's probably, probably because... 
Queen of Barbecue was kicking ass, which yeah, allowed yeah. me to kick ass. Sure, sure. Uh, so, yeah, uh, go to previous broadcasts. It has Korean Barbecue and Woodshrew, both extremely talented Dota players. They are both very integrated into the scene, understand what's going on way better than I do, way better than Cyphus yeah, does. God, yes. um, and they uh, they kind of break it down for us. They they take um, recent scandals, which is, is funny. They talk about kind of what's going on in the pro scene, seeing as we have 17 tournaments going on simultaneously. They can kind of give make it so it's digestible for everybody else. So. Yeah, there's a lot of Dota to cover, and they kind of pick through uh, the 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 weeds, as it were, of Dota Two news mm-hmm. and give you the stuff that's pertinent to the scene in general. Uh, it's, it's a great show, definitely check it out. And of course, Theorycraft Thursdays mm-hmm. uh, coming up every Thursday with their Synergy and Proud, where they do some high level meta theory crafting. And uh, proud that term that Roland hates so much. I'm fucking proud of Proud. I I am so proud of Proud after after last week's Proud game. Uh, with RC. Yeah, um, that was an incredible game. If you guys have not checked that out, we sent out a tweet on Friday because we need to do a show uh, or release a Docky Classic, but um, that we sent the link to the VOD in that tweet, and that is a game that is worth checking out. Uh, I mean, just to see a good game. If you like good Dota, that's a good Dota right there. Oh, it's fucking excellent Dota. Um, I, yeah, I'm sure we need to close this out. I'm sure we're going uh, way over an <laughs> hour. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Click on the Amazon banner for fuck's sake. Definitely do. One last plug. Friday coming up. We are. I'm going to commit to it here. We're going to do the Fallout show. Uh, I'm going to sit down with their Cynity You've and Wazoo. You've already committed to it multiple times. So I know. This but we are doing anything. it this time, damn it. Uh, okay. We're going we're to discuss the pros, cons, everything we like, love, hate about uh, Fallout 4 after putting some decent hours into it. I put a few more hours into it over this weekend. Um I don't know. With mixed reviews. I could play it if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep, you're solidly on the Dota train. I know that, sir. It's just like, I log in to Fallout and it's like, well, I could exit. <laughs> it's just like, exit. <laughs> That's what I could use, do. Why don't you use that new Steam option to permanently remove all your things? <laughs> I'm not going to permanently remove it. Maybe one day, like, Dota will be down for maintenance and I can pop in and walk around and. Nah. I was spared by Steam today. <clears throat> I almost I almost got locked into a Civ 5 hole. I started up Civ 5, I got about 10 turns into it, and uh, for some reason the game crashed. Got it. And the, the, the computer gods saved me from what was inevitably something that would have taken up way too much time. You're, you're just okay with playing those like uh, mindless... Ish, oh, like it's mindless. it's kind of mindless. Oh, there is nothing mindless. About okay, this mindless game. is the wrong. My okay, it's not mindless. I take that back. Uh, I don't Sip know. Five requires an intense amount. It of does. Analysis. Yes, it does require. Now I'm talking about. I don't know. Like I don't even know why that game doesn't bring me back. It's kind of like Hearthstone, where it was like this game's really cool. I'll play it like two or three times. Uh, like I just don't get sucked into those. I like a, I love a good I love a I good strategy know. game that requires I, I like a game that lets me think about what I'm going to do for a moment and weigh the decision. I like to be on the same I love that type of game as well, but I like to be on the same uh, playing field. And in Hearthstone, I know that without uh, hundreds of dollars or thousands of hours, I, I will never be on that same I, level I, of playing. I now dis- I now disagree with that. Okay. But well, we should get into that on another show. I, I, well, no, I, I agree with that to an extent in that, yeah, you're not going to be, a, you're not going to compete with the pros because you don't have the cards that they have. Uh, but that does not mean that it's you just, can't strategically design a deck that makes you competitive in an entertaining way. Sure. You and, know, and I built, you know, like maybe you're decks. not going to get above rank 15 with the cards that you have access to, but you have the ability to continue getting new cards. Along the way. You yeah, by the, doing your daily game. quests and yeah. by putting in thousands of hours. And if you go into the arena and you oh, win no. a lot, you can, just... you can complete most of those quests. The worst, the, the most intensive quest I've seen <clears throat> thus far was win five games in Tavern Brawl. And I instantly clicked the X and got a new quest. I'm just saying it's one of those, it's like that Marvel game you play oh, on your no. phone. That is, it's very different from that. I'm just saying it's just not my deal. It's not like I don't want to like have to check in on my video games. Like I didn't like Chia Pets. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't. You mean like Tamagotchis? Tamagotchis. Pets. They were or yeah, Tamagotchi pets or whatever the fuck. Where sure. you had to feed your animal. I like to cheat on Sims so I didn't have to feed my because you know what? I it's hard enough to feed myself. 
not for money, <laughs> just for remembering. Like to, oh, I'm, uh, I'm hungry, but I want to play more Dota. <laughs> no, I'm with you on The Sims, uh, but I, I don't. I, I, I think you paint too broad a, too broad a stroke. Uh, with all of those games. I, I don't think Hearthstone is necessarily one of those games. The thing that's awesome about... And I know Civ Five well, is not one of those No, it's, it's not one of those games. You're on a level playing field, of course. Um, I guess it's because it's against the computer. I think the lack there of competition... Um, with Civ Five. With Civ Five is what is what gets me in, which is why I had so much fun playing with you, against you, and on a team with you, because the cooperation... That's another thing that we didn't hit on, is that a game would need cooperation. But... Um, yeah, uh, StarCraft 2 and Dota 2 have been the games that I played over the last, since 2010, so five, almost going on six years. Well, and, I, and they I both have the same thing. Know, is that they both have, well, obviously... Level playing field. They both have a level playing not field. Not just level playing field. Um, I, I, I'm thinking more genre uh, similarity. Uh, obviously, StarCraft 2 is, is an RTS, real-time strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and Dota was derived from an RTS. And I, I think that those two... Built, think, built with inside of one. Right, but there are so many RTS elements. I mean, it, it still reminds me of an RTS in a lot of ways. No, because there's no macro management. Macro management was the hardest part of StarCraft 2. I don't know. It I, was. There, the micro management... No, I'm, I'm saying from an element standpoint, there are a lot of similar elements in like in that RTS. Clicking your hero around? Like that's the only <laughs> element I can think of. Okay. Yeah, you're no. No. No, I, not I at all. I think others I will think agree. you need to play StarCraft. I think others will agree with me. No. I, I played StarCraft one, I'm good. I don't need cool, more. you're like back in yeah, okay. No. I don't need any more no. RTS. Uh real time strategy and MOBA are if I extremely any different. RTS, it'd be Warcraft two. Yeah, or three. Warcraft three was Dope. Mm, I, Warcraft 3 yeah. was very reminiscent of Dota because it had a hero uh, in there where you had a, a sure. hero that you would level up and whatnot. Warcraft 2 did not have that. Age of Empires did not have any of that. Um, level playing field, level playing field, level playing field. That's what I like. I like to I like to come into the game and say, hey, if I'm gifted at this game, I don't have to pay money. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to rise in rank because I'm better. Sure. You know, yeah, no, no, that's fair enough. Obviously, I'll, I'll go ahead and switch over to uh, our state of affairs. As you can see, this is after a year and a half, so, you know, I'm not gifted at Dota 2, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. None of us are. Mm -hmm. uh, just a proud RC and Korean and Witcher and kind of blue and wazoo. Mm, kind of. He went to Lycan's Vinegar, dude. <laughs> like, he just got a certificate. So that's where where, where's, where's Earthshaker University? Oh, uh, that's no, just some community college, dude. <laughs> that's just some community college. That they're like, all right, uh, we're talking about Fisher 101 today. Uh, show up if you'd like. There's an online section to it uh, where you can fill out the whole packet on. <laughs> we are sharing materials beforehand, but if you show up and you haven't, that's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Right, so before we turn every other .p host against us, let's close it out. Uh, thanks for everybody popping into the stream. We're trying to do this with every episode of .p henceforth. Uh, we're going to be airing them here basically the day before they they officially release through the show. Uh, you can check them out here on the stream at twitch.tv forward slash .p tv. That's D-O-T-P TV. So until next time, this is Cyphus for Roland saying good luck and Godspeed. Okay, so that was our show. Uh, Gushi, I didn't know it was your birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Gushi. Are you going to play a game of Dota with me, Cyphus? Uh, probably not, because I have work in about... Oh, it's 9.30. In about nine hours. So, Whew. I'm going to go home and go to bed. That's what I'm going to do. Whew. But yeah, thanks to Whew. everybody who popped in, especially you, Gush. On that Loco 508. Yeah, I got a little PP. Yay. You, what the fuck? Gay-ass music. That was his contribution <laughs> to the chat. <laughs> What the uh, it was gay ass music. What are you talking about? Okay, so all right, folks, that's gonna do it for me. Yeah, that's gonna do it for me as well. Um, tune in tomorrow night.